Thank you, everyone, for joining us for a Connected PE session. And I was thinking before I hopped on that this is probably one of the first ones that I personally have ran uh, in, in a couple of years. You know, we did a lot of webinars, obviously, during the COVID time. And most of the time, people coming and presenting in these webinars are people that I have organized. And I'm just as the host. But this particular topic is something that I'm very, very interested in. It's something that's driving all of the work that, you know, I'm currently doing in the PE space. And I'm excited to share with you um, what that looks like. You'll get a chance to, to play with the tools. You'll get a chance to use them. Um, and then we'll talk about how you can keep access to those tools going forward. Um, before I do that, there are thousands of teachers already using them inside of Connected PE. Um, I'm not sure if any of the people in the room have already played with the, the AI tools that I'm alluding to, but there's, yeah, there's lots and lots of value already being created. This isn't a conceptual webinar of something that m might happen in the future. This is genuinely tool sets that uh, are already finding value um, in the space. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So obviously, first, welcome. Um, I appreciate people joining us from all over the world, different time zones, uh, even in, in, the, in the UK, which is probably in the middle of the night. Um, I, I appreciate it. If you stay until the end, you will get a certificate that, that credits you for the professional learning that you have done here today. Um, there'll be a QR code. We'll also email it in case people miss it. Um, but some people, you know, take that part really seriously. Other people... It's you know, Lorraine midnight. Other people, it's um, you know, it's it's something that they just do for their own personal records. Up to you. So obviously today, what's it about? Um, I think the title is pretty clear. You know, we're we're talking about uh, AI tools in in PE, and in particular, we're talking about the stuff that we've been building um, in that particular space, and you know. We're always the pioneers of, of tool sets in the PE landscape. That hasn't changed. It's going to continue to be the case. Um, we're building for really where education ends up, and that's what we've always done. And um, these tools are really uh, in that same sort of direction. Um, so we're going to dive into them. But the real general kind of framing here is that the focus is on what role does AI have in revolutionizing educational practices? Now, that's a very broad statement, but, you know, how can we use AI to change and augment some of the things that we, we do day to day? You know, things like lesson planning, things like uh, creating assessment pieces or report writing, you know, what role does generative AI have in that particular space? So that's going to be part of uh, what we talk about today. And then the second part, obviously, is a hands-on use of the tools that we have inside of uh, the Connected PE platform. Now, typically, these would be locked down and you wouldn't be able to get access to those unless you were a signed-in registered member. Um, but we've opened the doors so that you can access those uh, and experience them. And we'll be doing some practical activities along the, the, the time period that we have here um, to put them to the test. In saying that, um, if you are watching the replay and this is, you know, not the live call, you may not be able to experience the tools um, firsthand. You'll just be able to watch them through the lens of um, through what I'm doing on the screen. Okay, so I have a few questions for you before we get started. And um, we've got a pretty big room. There was over 500 people registered for this session, which, which speaks to uh, the topic and it speaks to um, the interest that it sort of got from the people that we communicate previously and, you know, with our, with our email lists and whatnot. But I have a couple of questions and um, it'll really help me get an understanding for uh, what I think is the promise that we solve and have seen people really getting some value with. And the first one that I have for you is, and this is going to be different for all of you, um, there's, there's no magical answer here, but... How much time do you typically spend planning lessons or units each week? Um, just put that in the chat, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. I mean, it's going to be very different. It depends on how many classes you've got, how, how long you've been doing this, and, you know, so many variables in this. 
um, for sure. I, like, but let me know. Let me know in the chat. What does it look like? Pat is the first one to come through. Two to three hours. That's awesome. You know, that's that's um, that's still you know quite a bit of time. Sam is two to three hours, about four hours, two to four hours. You know, I I did a little bit of research here, and um, yeah, like like Philip has mentioned, if it's a new unit, you probably spend more time. Um, if it's something that you've done for 30 years, as Linda says, you know, you've, you've got these, these systems in place. But there's a, there's a pretty, there's a clear pattern there, two, three hours, maybe more um, for some people. I did a bit of research and um, it, it was quite a lot of hours. You know, it was some study, I can't remember it right now, but it was in the six to seven hour range per week. But that wasn't just lesson planning, it was other administrative kind of tasks. Um, included in there. But I guess what I'm trying to articulate here is that we it, it's not just the face-to-face -face te teaching that we have to do. We've got all these other responsibilities that, that go into our workload. Thanks for that. The next question is, I mean, how often do you find yourself seeking out new ideas and inspiration? And that could be, you know, you you follow an email list from someone or you go online and look for new games and activities is this something that's part of your normal strategy or is everything that you do just from your own previous experiences? You know, I know myself, whenever there's something that I uh, am interested in doing, like Lorraine has mentioned, you know, I'm looking for new ideas and things all the time, almost daily. Um, and I think that's what makes teachers, you know, really resourceful. They're, they're always on the hunt for ideas. It can even be the holidays and, you know, you're on your vacation and, and you stumble across something and, um, you take advantage of that. And I think that's just the norm. So um, it's, it's always great to see, always trying to find new ideas and ways to teach. And I don't think that ever, 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 ever ceases. And then I guess my final question for you is, what have you heard about AI? Now, this, I, I don't mind what you say here. Put in the chat, what have you heard about it? What do you know? What have you seen? If you don't know anything, you can say, no, this is the first time. Um, it's it's going to be very diverse, the potential answers here. But let me know, what what have you heard about AI? Thanks, Becky. <laughs> okay, yeah, chat GPT, that's, that's, that's obviously been the um, big catalyst for many of the things that have been made possible recently. Um, get with the program and do it. Yeah, generative AI is is pretty amazing, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Um, got kid in trouble for copying an AI assignment. <laughs> Can win the series of cricket first time. It will revolutionize it. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah. There's lots of stuff. Um, you know, the bottom line is it is a really powerful tool set that it's only about three to six months in its life cycle. Um, and obviously it's been going for years in terms of the, the early kind of work that led us to where we are now. But some background here that will be really helpful um, in framing why we're talking about it kind of now and we, why we weren't talking about it um, back then. There is this important concept called Moore's Law. Um, let me know in the chat if you've heard of it. I, I don't imagine many people have. It's something that I um, am very fond of and I read a lot of material that kind of is in this space. It's just the way that I operate. It's the way my, my personal interest. But um, Moore's Law is, is this observed trend that has taken place um, throughout history. And because of it, we're here right now in this webinar room. Essentially, the best way to think of it is kind of like the following. Imagine you're uh, coaching a basketball team and every single player's skills double after every practice. Imagine that. And as Patrick has mentioned, it's, it's about computing power. Imagine, imagine this scenario, though, that you're a coach and every time uh, you, you coach or work with those players, their skills double. Now, that sounds obviously like science fiction. Um, let me know in the chat what that would be like. It would obviously be in, in be, be, it would be, it'd be wild um, and it's not realistic. 
the point I'm trying to make here is if that was the way that your basketball team operated, well, that's basically in line with Moore's law. Essentially, <laughs> sorry, I got my guard dog there beside me. Computer power moves exponentially, as Patrick has, has, has highlighted. It typically doubles. And obviously, as a result of that, we've gone through all of these amazing trends um, throughout our society. And a couple of those that I'm going to point out for you here are kind of illustrated by this graph. You know, we've, we've got this exponential change. And Moore's law has come into effect in the latter part of that. You know, obviously, um, it wasn't present. Uh, during the BCs, but as as things became digitized uh, in sort of the last sixty years or so, this Moore's law trend has been very observed. And what it really means, in essence, is the computational power of our devices is on an ex exponential curve. And why I'm talking about this and what that's got to do with PE is um, that because of Moore's law we are now able to have AI be a topic that we can talk about uh, in a classroom setting. Um, you know, previously people working in the AI space had to use computational power that far exceeded the devices that were kind of available to the average person. These days, Moore's law, you know, this, this kind of technologically innovation has made it possible where we right now are able to use these tool sets um, kind of from devices that we already have. And, and that's, that's really at the essence of why we're talking about what we're about to talk about today. Um, Moore's law has made it possible and it's going to continue to happen. And, and I mention it because even though we're still early, this thing is on an exponential growth trend now. Um, it's not going to stop because you think that, um, you know, it's a little bit scary. It's not going to stop because uh, it raises questions about, you know, whether we're still relevant. It's going to continue to be exponential and um, it, 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 it creates some huge opportunities for us as educators. So what are they? How can it help PE? Why have I dedicated, you know, the, the last sort of six months to building things to help PE teachers um, in this space? Uh, a couple of reasons. Well, I mean, firstly, this isn't kind of conceptual. You know, we're not talking about something that's coming soon, which is kind of the trend for a lot of uh, technology. This is now, like th this is already present and available. You know, you can make advantage and take advantage of these opportunities and know that they're just going to continue to to be augmented. So the first thing that I think it helps us with, and it speaks to some of the stuff that I asked about earlier, and that is uh, efficiency. You know, like the opportunity for generative AI to improve efficiency is is insane. Now, this stuff is already done. Like you, you will get to experience these uh, opportunities today in things like lesson planning and report writing, um, admin stuff, you know, freeing up time so that we can do what we do best and that is actually work with the students because believe it or not, the best value that we have isn't, the stuff that we do behind the scenes. I mean, it's essential, but I think we work best when we're face-to-face -face with our students. Um, let me know in the chat if you think that is true. We do our best work when we're actually with the group of people that we serve. Um, unfortunately, admin work is part of the job and AI can really um, help us in that particular department. And, and that's where we've dedicated our resources to building tools in that particular space. Um, and I, I don't think I'm alone there. I think, I think we do our best work with our students, not behind the scenes. The second area that um, we're building in, and we, I also think that AI has a big role and you're going to start to see some stuff um, in this space, is professional development. What I mean is how can you be the best teacher possible through real-time personalised learning? Um, you know, we've got 200 hours of professional learning inside Connect PE. It's a lot of content, but what could be done better is um, having that content threaded through in a way that's more accessible, more personalized and more real time. And, and AI can help shape that. And that's what we're about to roll out. It's going to transform the offering that we, we have here. 
A couple of other areas that AI can help in PE, and this is more people, people will be building these tool sets now. They're going to be part of solutions that your school might subscribe to and so on. Um, and that is personalization. Um, that is AI can help you tailor learning to students. Now, we've got a couple of ways that you can do that with the tool sets that we've built, um, but we're going to start to see some really personalized at scale things taking place um, in the different tools and products and services that you know, your school might subscribe to. Maybe your school uses Google Classroom, for example, um, or another learning management tool. It's going to be threaded with AI. That's, that's, a, that's a certainty. And then the final thing that we're going to start to see more of is um, data-driven decisions. So using AI to make sense of data that we collect and helping that inform us about what we do. Um, so the first two things that I spoke about, we've built solutions for in Connected PE we're going to use today. These other two things uh, are really just like, well, this is what's coming. This is the landscape. This is where we're headed. And um, it's like we pointed out, it's operating at Moore's Law, at Moore's Law exponential rate. While those things don't necessarily uh, ex exist in your space right now, they're going to exist. They're going to be there presently um, very, very soon. So here we are. These are the AI tools that we have built over the last quarter, three, six months. Um, they're in use with thousands of teachers in different scenarios. And um, I'm excited to share them with you because they, they provide a lot of opportunity to do things in that efficiency space, uh, in that professional learning kind of space. Um, and we think that they add value to the work that teachers do. So without further ado, let's dive in now if you're um if you're here right now it's it's time to to scan the qr code um on i mean you can use your phone to do these activities like i'm assuming you might be on a desktop or a laptop now maybe you're watching this from your phone if that's the case don't leave this screen because you'll lose hearing me and so forth um but get scan get that scanning um happening on your device if you need the link to actually access that, I'll put it in the chat too. But then just let me know in the chat, um, just with a, a, with a thumbs up or yes or something, that you've managed to make it to that page. Now I can see um, a lot of people are obviously there because our traffic has spiked. Let me know in the chat. Have you made it to that page, whether it's on your mobile device or whether you've clicked on a link on a different thing? Um, <laughs> thumbs up. Becky says, we are in. Just I'll wait for a few more people to, to make their way across and and then I'll switch over and, and, and I'll drive it. So in, in, case, um, in case you haven't got access to that spot. Cool. All right, let me sh share my screen. Brilliant. Okay, so um, this is our unit planner. And it is the first tool set that we're going to, um, to actually explore today that's powered by AI. It helps you create a scheme of work or a unit plan or kind of that high level overview um, kind of, you know, activity or scenario that um, you might be creating a program around. And we're going to put it to the test now. And what I would like you to do is the following activity. Now, it's going to be up on the screen um, for you now. It's interactive task. What I'd like you to do is consider a unit that you like to teach. So a unit that you'd like to teach. This isn't something that um, you've taught maybe before. Um, I want to sort of illustrate the power here of, of how this can be a research tool as well. And you need to choose it as a, the topic, the age group, the number of lessons, and the curriculum that you'd like to um, 
build it around. And that's important. You can actually say the curriculum that you want to map it to. Now, note, I've got an example there. A gymnastics unit, eight by 60 minute lessons, focusing on the, focusing on the Australian curriculum for year eight. That's what I would type into the unit planner. So can you let me know in the chat, what are you going to plan yours on? So in the chat, type in the prompt that um, you're going to use, and this will help other people see and get some ideas on, on how they interact with these tools. Um, what, what's the best way to ask the questions that you're, you're posing? Um, let me know in the chat. And then when you've done that, actually put it in the unit planner and hit generate. And as Patrick has just said, yep, that took seconds. Let me know, Pat, what did you actually put in? What did you build? What was the, um, the focus of yours? And other people, let me know. What did you decide to, to build yours on? A biomechanics unit for 8 by 60 minutes, New Zealand curriculum, year 11 students. Brilliant. That's probably like level level two, is it? Level two, I think. Swimming unit, 18 sessions, grade two students. And let me go. Soccer unit. Brilliant. And just come up with a biomechanical. So, yeah, what this should do for, um, for people here is craft a unit outline that takes into account your input. Now, um, I've just put in the demo one there um, that it comes up with, and you can see that it generates the, the, the general outline and framework for um, that unit of work. Now, this isn't prescriptive. It's not designed to say, hey, take that and do it completely, run it you know, in your lessons. This is getting you 60, 70% of the way there. And then it's up to you to iterate and kind of make some changes and um, say, well, you know, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this, et cetera, and kind of go from that particular spot. Now, you can see here in my example, I've got the general outline for each of those lessons um, that, you know, I would run with. You can see it's like a mini game and reflection, some resources and activities. Down the bottom here, I could you know, make some other changes and, and go from there. But the, the goal is you can copy this, take it to your Word documents or whatever tools you use, and you've made a start. You're not looking at a blank page anymore. You're, you're 60, 70 percent of the way there, um, which is kind of the point of these. You know, you want to think of them as um, your ally, your brainstorming companion, the tool that you use to, to help you get started in um, the planning journey. So that's the unit planner. Um, let me know in the chat if you haven't. What did you do? I can see a lot of, you know, really cool ideas in there. The roller skating unit. Um, David, how did that go? What, what did it come up with? Um, you know, I've never ran a, a roller skating unit before myself, but I'd be very keen to see what, um, what it did. We're going to move on. Um, but, yeah, just update the chat with what you did for yours if you haven't. Primary lesson for dance 30 minutes. Resilience and challenge unit. Brilliant. How did it go with that way? Because that's like a, you know, a health-driven kind of um, activity. And I should have mentioned this. This is the unit planner. So we're going to look at the lesson planner next, and that's where you would get more detail on the actual lesson. This is kind of like the high view over the course of a couple of weeks. This is what we, we plan to do. Okay, we're going to do the next one now, and that is the, uh, the lesson planner. So if, if you would like to, to try this out, scan that QR code or visit the link that I'm putting in the chat, which is the lesson planner. It's the same website that you were on. It's just a different navigation um, to where we were before. But let me know again in the chat, have you made it to the lesson planner? Just a thumbs up or, or something. 
Nice, David. Um, interesting lesson. Obstacle courses, safety, starting, stopping, balancing. Hey, I mean, it got you started. See, I, I wouldn't have thought about those things personally if I was designing that unit. And that's that's why I like it. It's kind of like that companion that, you know, you can brainstorm things with. Thank you, Jeremiah. Um, let me know if you're there in the lesson planner. <clears throat> For those of you that um, don't have a QR code scanner, I'm just pasting it in the chat to so that you can um, just click it and, and head along. But when you're there, the activity that I would like you to do for the lesson planner is the following. Have a look at the generated unit plan that you did earlier. Now, I know that some of you have pasted that in the chat. I appreciate that. Um, have a look at one of the lessons that you found interesting. So it might have given you six lessons if you asked it, you know, to produce six by a unit of six lessons. Then I want you to create one of those lessons in more detail. So the example I have here is if I had said a gymnastics unit for year eight, one of the lessons might have been on balance and coordination. So my prompt would be something like a 45 minute lesson on balance uh, for year eight in the Australian curriculum, and then hit generate. And then let me know in the chat what your specific lesson was that you actually crafted it around. And um, I'm going to bring up my screen for those of you that um, can't follow along with, with it personally. Here's what I'm talking about. So you would put in your actual lesson that you wanted to, to do in more detail from the unit outline that we did earlier. Um, Let's imagine that I did a soccer unit. This time I'm going to um, a soccer dribbling lesson for year five, inquiry learning, Australian curriculum. Um, and I'm going to hit run. Now, if you if you got an error or something, um, just, just have a look up on the screen and you can see what it what would be happening. So here is the unit that I've prompted. Now, remember, this is up to your prompting and the kind of effort and attention you put in here. I, I'd be very specific. I say 45-minute soccer dribbling lesson, year five. I've even said inquiry learning because you can put in a pedagogical style that you would like it to leverage. Um, and in this case, I've said inquiry learning, Australian curriculum. Now, you can see here that it's included in curriculum links. It's even included a mathematics um, measuring and kind of inquiry angle there. The objective material, it's given me the actual warm-up activity, the, the intro, the inquiry lesson, and the assessment kind of activity that, um, that I've, that's taken place. Now, that's a pretty good lesson. Now, if I'm using inquiry in my... Uh, general pedagogical tool set, that's an inquiry lesson that I could run with a basketball dribbling unit. You know, if you didn't include that, you would get a different outcome. You know, maybe you would just say direct teaching, um, which is the common common type of thing that people probably would get from, from the lessons that they produce. But let me know in the chat, what did you make? Dave, how did your uh, chookball lesson go with teaching games for understanding? Um, did it give you a series of questions or something that you could pose to, to draw out those, those type of um, learning outcomes? Let me know. What did people produce? You can see my soccer unit is ready to go. I mean, personally, I would probably take it and modify some of the things and, you know, change some stuff to reflect the space that I have. But it's, it's going to get me started. You know, I'm going to obviously be able to use that. Um, and... And even if I've taught that unit before, it's going to reaffirm some of the things that um, that maybe I've done in the past. Okay, anyone else in the chat? What did you happen to produce? Forty-minute lesson on cardiovascular endurance on the New Zealand curriculum. With student-driven tasks, I got specific tactics and strategies to start badminton. Nice. How did it go with the cardiovascular endurance with that student, like student-directed angle that you put into it? 50-minute handball, dribbling, passing, and shooting lesson, Philippine curriculum. 
Very cool. Chookball lesson, no questions, but breaks down 40 minutes into sections. Yeah, right. So, again, it depends on how you frame the questions as to what you've got in response, but um, it is a conversation that you have with the generative AI. You, it's very rare that the very first thing that you would get is what you're going to, to run with, and, and you would make changes personally or you would go down the bottom and ask a further question. Um, very good. Soccer on girls' participation. Okay, so that's the lesson planning tool. Um, in the last, in the last uh, six months or so, there's been about 20,000 lessons generated with that tool. And, I mean, I think that's pretty insane. I think that's really powerful. Um, typically what happens in this space is, you know, you purchase a resource that might have lessons in it. The problem with that is you can't change them. I mean, they they just come as they are. Um, or you look around the web and piece together bits and pieces and spend spend a lot of time. Um, this is designed to get you 60, 70% of the way there and then, you know, obviously cut down on that, that preparation time that um, typically goes into this. Let me know in the chat. How are you finding it so far? How have you how have you enjoyed um, those two tools before we move on? Um, it would be nice if it included resources such as videos, diagrams, for sure. Yep, yep. Something that we could add to uh, the list of things that we could output. Absolutely. Um, Thirty minute mindfulness lesson. That would be cool. I'd, I actually like to be in that lesson. All right, we are going to move on now. There's, I think, three more tools that we're going to show with you and um, show you today. And the next one is the PE Games Maker. So, again, scan that QR code. Let me know in the chat. Um, you're right, Renee. It would be good for CRTs. You know, you're about to leave a class. You can spin up a lesson and, and hand it to them. Um, and you're right. It's a head start. Um the earlier, the earlier you are in your teaching journey, the less prescriptive it would be. Um, but for some people, I'm telling you now, we've, we've got a lot of people from lots of parts in the world. And for some of you, for some of the people that we work with, that's, that's the very first time they've ever seen a lesson plan, like ever. And that just speaks to that everyone's different. Everyone's got different backgrounds and um, levels of training and whatnot. And um, for some of the people in our audience, this is the very first time I've even seen a plan. Um, for others who've been teaching for 30 years, it's a good reaffirmer. Maybe it'll give them some, some things that they've not done before. Um, but, yeah, it's like a colleague that you've got on hand. Now, the PE Games Maker, scan that. Let me know in the chat when you're there, um, and then I can obviously move on. Um, so the PE Games Maker is kind of like the next progression um, in the journey. You know, you've got a unit, you've planned what it could look like. Here's the lesson in some detail. Now, hey, what about if we 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 want a few games and activities around some of the stuff that we're um, we're going to do? So I want you to reflect on the lesson that you just made before. Um, so, for ex ex instance, I did a basketball unit. Um, in year seven, you know, and one of the key skills that I was aiming for was was dribbling. If you head over to the PE Games Maker tool now, I want you to input that key skill or fundamental movement or whatever it was, key activity. Now, this obviously works if you were doing a PE Games unit before. If you didn't do a PE Games unit, then just think about a PE activity for this. Put in the skill and then hit generate. And what it's going to do is provide you with five games, PE games, that have that skill set inside of it. So obviously in my lesson that I produced before, I said dribbling and it gave me a, you know, a, a lesson that I could start with. The next step that I would do is, all right, well, what games and activities could I do that reinforce that skill that um, the lesson was designed to be about? And this is where that tool fits in. So I'm going to flip over to sharing um, my screen for those of you that um, maybe can't follow along. 
But let me know in the chat, what was one of the names of the games that you were given? Now, this is just for my own interest. I'd be very keen to see. This is called, um, I don't know, the PE Games <laughs> Tennis Baseball. I thought I made this up. Um, very cool. Did it give you any others? Did it give you, did it give you five games? At least that's what it should do um, based on the, the skill or the activity that was provided. Piggy in the middle. Okay, for me, um, I'm going to say, what was it? Dribbling and hit run. So what this does is it obviously heads out, it, it finds or constructs games that leverage that skill set at its core. So you can see here the obvious choice, like the dribble relay, how to modify it, um, the dribble tag, dribble around the cones, dribble and score, um, etc. So that's it. That's the PE Games Finder in essence. Um, and we've seen, again, thousands of uses of this um, obstacle course challenges, tag, relay. Again, some of these you've probably played before. Um, but the goal here is to get you just thinking about things. Maybe you find something new. Maybe you take this and go, well, I would change that and modify this, you know, um, in, a, in a different setting. Um, in one of our last webinars, we had someone try and try and really trick this by putting in a very obscure skill. And it was able to come up with games that would work to leverage and enhance that skill because generative AI, what's happening here is it, it understands the content on the internet. It uses that and generates with generative AI and, and is able to make its own kind of conclusions. So even though something might be very obscure, it, it understands the context and is able to draw from and come up with, in some cases, original pieces based on things that it's, it's kind of seen in um, other parts of the internet. So back to the slides, spike ball relay. <laughs> that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I think that's really useful. We have it as, as one of the tool sets inside of um, our PE Games app which some of you may may be aware of. It's an app called Peer Games. It's on the App Store. Um, inside of that is the Peer Games Finder, and it's just a very simple way to do exactly what we just did then um, from your mobile device. So if you're you know you're in your classroom and you know you need you need a game, what the Peer Games app is one way that you can um, experience that. Anyway, on to the next tool. And that is the rubric maker. So scan that. For those of you that are waiting for the link, I'm going to copy that into the chat now. The rubric maker. And again, let me know when you're there. Just, yeah, thumbs up or, um, yep, in the chat. Thank you. So as the name suggests, this is a tool that allows you to put in a topic or um, a skill or an activity that you would like an assessment rubric created out of. Um, now, a rubric is a very popular way to conduct assessments. Um, I like them. They're very efficient. Um, you can certainly modify this into a different format, but it's designed um, to be a rubric. Now, the activity that I have written down was to create one, um, was to create a paper airplane. And I forgot to update this slide. That's not going to be what we do today. I'd like you to create a rubric that connects with the skill or activity that we've already been designing for in previous slides. Um, so if you were doing a dribbling task like me or you were doing um, chook ball unit or um, something, I want you to create a rubric that matches with that particular unit. Forget the paper airplane. Um, that's just me forgetting to update this slide from a previous um, webinar. But let me know in the chat 
what did you put in as your prompt? And the best way to do this to make sure that it's uh, you get the best result would be like the following. So here is an example of how you might prompt. Yep, PE Games is available on Android also. So the best way to prompt the rubric maker for the best results would be like the demos that you've got on the screen there. So a basketball jump shot rubric for year seven Australian curriculum. The more detail you put into it, the better your output is going to be. So let me know in the chat, what did you build your rubric around? And then hit run and see what actually happens. Kicking for uh, kickball grade seven uh, US curriculum, nice. Again, you might have to say national curriculum United States to be making sure that it does match the right area. But interpersonal skills focusing on New Zealand curriculum for year nine, forearm bump for students in California curriculum. Cool. Yeah, again, you'll play around with those prompts to get the response and the result that you like, but you can see here what it's made for me. So I have the start of um, I have the start of a rubric that I could use for um, this particular task. Now you can see here that I picked the like basketball jump shot. So it's it's come up with technique, accuracy, footwork, shot selection, etc., and it's given me different criteria for each of those. So I could then potentially assess and say, yep, the student demonstrates an understanding of the proper technique for a jump shot and tick, they get a four. That's the, that's the idea there. Um, to, Mark, to answer your question, how many curriculums? Well, I mean, it's, it's infinite. If that curriculum exists online, then it's already aware of it. Um, you just need to be very clear in assess, in, in, ex, in making sure that it's referencing the right spot. Um, also currently there's, you know, there is some cutoff, like if it's a more recent curriculum, like something that was published in the last year or so, then it might not do a great job of mapping to that. But it should get you started because without realizing it, most curriculums are very, very similar um, globally. Throwing a trick ball unit. Let me know in the chat. How did it go? What did it produce for you? Do you think you could make, um, make that some sort of tool that you rolled out and assessed with um, would you make some changes? I mean, if that was me, I would make some changes. Uh, and that's kind of the point here. You're supposed to just get a start, get get the ball rolling um, on, you know, putting that out into um, the world. I mean, it's not prescriptive, even though it gets pretty good most most of the time. Handball shooting, year eight Philippine curriculum. Nice work. Heading back to our slides. Yeah, Sam, that's right. You could give that rubric to students and have them do a self-assessment. So then you could actually say, hey, simplify this for students um, as one of the options. And you, it would give you a rubric that you could then give to students to do a self-assessment. And that would that would be all possible Um I might even demonstrate that. Let me just switch back. So if I scroll down, um, change something else, make these simpler for student understanding. So it's changed the language to just be a simpler simpler grasp of, um, yeah, of that particular thing. So it's a conversation. You get to actually change and converse and talk with it. Now you can get to the bottom here and say, um, you know, provide something else or change the criteria or add more criteria. Like it's you get to continue the conversation and, and get the output that um, best matches your needs. Okay, back to slides. I think we have two to go. So um, the worksheet maker, as the name suggests, if you want to scan that and 
we'll have a look at what it does. For those of you um, in the chat who need the link, I'm going to copy that in. And then again, let me know when you've made it along to um, the worksheet page. Take it someone has made it there. Oh, hang on. I may not have gave permission to that one. Sorry, let me just do that now. You'll just have to refresh the page in a second. <clears throat> I thought I did them all, but clearly not. All right, in a moment, it will be updated. But while I'm doing that, in the chat, can you just let me know, what's a topic that you're teaching right now? So um, I don't know, what, what are you teaching? What's a topic? What's a, uh, a something that you're about to teach? Pop it in the chat. And um, by the time I do that, I think I will have updated the page. <laughs> For those of you on summer break, um, then just think about what you will be doing when you get back to school, um, a topic or any, any topic um, that comes to mind. Yep, because there's so many people on the site, it's just taking a bit longer for me to update that. Chronic adaptions to aerobic training, cool. So what um, the worksheet maker allows you to do, and hopefully it's updating now, you'll be able to, to get in in a second. is the following. So, all right. Now, if you refresh that page, you should be able to see the worksheet maker. And the task that I have for you is reflect on the topic that you've just mentioned to me in, um, in the chat. And I want you to create a worksheet about that particular topic. Um, so if you said rhythmic activities or you said chronic adaptions to aerobic training summer vacation 101 that would be funny for you to put that in um health promotion mental health nutrition whatever it is that you have put in put that in as the worksheet topic and hit generate and and see what it does Again, this isn't a prescriptive worksheet, but it, it gives you some ideas of activities and things that you could potentially do um, with your, you know, your group of students. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, here's the worksheet maker. Um, I'm going to say...
say, volleyball skills for year 10 as my example, Australian curriculum. And what it goes about doing is producing the content that you could use on some sort of worksheet or assessment task or um, something of, of those of those lines. So you can see it's produced a multiple choice series of questions, some fill in the blank stuff, true and false, a short answer. But the real focus that I like is the extended activities. So it'll give you an extended activity or a challenge or a task that you could do as some sort of assessment or task connected to what it is that you were working on. Um, so I said volleyball skills. It's given me watch a professional volleyball game and write a summary. Create a training plan for a volleyball player. Draw and label a volleyball court. So these are the kind of um, things that you could potentially take and then do. Now, I mean, you probably wouldn't do all of them, but it's to give you a bit of a brainstorming um, prompt. Let me know in the chat, what is it that it came up with for you? So enter in the chat, what was the actual extended task that the worksheet generator produced for you? Don't give me one of the multiple choice questions. Um, just give me one of the extended tasks that it, that it provided. So Dave, cooperative learning. I mean, that'd be interesting to see what it does there. Keen to see what people got as their output. <clears throat> So I got the volleyball court mapping activity. Um, what did other people get? Create a presentation on the benefits of cooperative learning. Yeah, I mean, you can see that's, you wouldn't necessarily do that in your PE class, but that's the idea of it. Takes your topic, gives you suggestions on tasks and activities that work with that. Extended, uh, write a short report on the physics of basketball shooting, include information on the forces involved. See, that's an activity you could actually do to teach that. That's something that I've done before too. Very similar kind of tasks when teaching that type of content. Um, but that's the idea. Here's the topic. What could we do with this as an assessment? Um, here's some questions about it that we could ask. Here's some you know, true and false material. Um, research and write a short paragraph about a famous athlete who has excellent cardio. Yeah, cool. These, these are tasks that people do in, in their school kind of activities. Okay, we've only got about five minutes to go. And the last one that I want to share with you is one that has had heavy use in the last week or so um, in Australia. And that's because at the moment, it is the middle of the school academic year, the typical school year. And um, People are writing school reports, you know, different parts of the world, not as relevant at the moment, um, but in Australia, definitely happening at the present. So scan that QR code and head along. If you need the link, it's now in the chat. Oh, okay. Good question. Um, Nicole, currently that's, I haven't actually output the questions. I need to do that. Um, at the moment, they're not there. All right. When you're at the report writer, let me know. Um, and this is the final, the final AI tool that we're going to look at um, here today. <clears throat> And the task will be, <clears throat> okay, if I've put the wrong link in, um, the link is in the chat. For those of you that are already on the site, um, you can just use the navigation to on the site to find the rubric maker. Um, oh, sorry, the, the report writer. The task is this. Have a think about something that you're doing in your life Um you're going to write a report for it. Now, this might be a personal hobby or a project or something along those lines. Um, 
And we're going to use that as the basis for this particular task. Um, the chat link is the rubric maker. Oh, sorry, it is too. My bad. Copied the wrong one. There it is. So the way that you might do that is example, your name, passionate about education, excelling in innovative teaching strategies, recently completed a webinar series and revised curriculum plan, needs to work on improving work-life balance. This is my report at the moment. So you would put those just dot points into the chat. And here's what it outputs. <clears throat> So you put your dot point prompts in and then hit run and it will generate, you know, a couple of a paragraph or more that makes sense of that particular um, dot point stuff that you're putting into the, into the equation. So have a go, put in your prompt. So if you're working on something, you know, fitness related, your name, doing well, just simple dot point uh, material. And then when you hit run, it's going to turn that into a paragraph that kind of is the feedback comment um, that takes those things into account. And then let me know in the chat, what did it say for you? If, you, if we're able to copy and paste it, put it in, that would be awesome. Um, if not, were you able to produce a report? Um, come, obviously, if you're on a mobile device, it's harder to copy and paste. But you can see here that you can then talk with it, have it update certain bits and pieces. You could then copy this text and make your own changes. Obviously, it's not prescriptive. <clears throat> All right. Anyone, what was your report? What did it look like? I think so too, Nicole. See, when you're teaching, you've got these things that you know about students. You know they're a good listener. You know they need, um, you know, to get their homework in on time, whatever it is. The hard part is putting it into a, a constructing sentence, and that's where AI can help. Um, so you still have to give it the raw ingredients. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the point. Um, but, yeah, you obviously get to be able to have it make sense of, of that particular data. Okay, so Lorraine, I'm going to, um, you, for sure, that's a good way to do it. Um, Lorraine, I'm going to explain how you can get access to this material, um, and that's what the next slides are about. So <clears throat> a couple of questions for you before we do that. What was your favorite tool? Put it in the chat. Um, which was it? Was it the unit planner, the lesson planner, the PE games finder, um, the report writer, the worksheet maker? Let me know in the chat which one appealed to you. That doesn't mean you're going to use it you know, all the time, like which one do you think you have um, obvious, <laughs> Lorraine says all. We've built them to be all useful and at different moments in, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day practice, um, the lesson planner, the games finder, all. <laughs> I can't pick a favourite because, you know, I'm coming up with new ones all the time and I'm like, um, this, is, this is really useful to me in this setting. Um, we have some others too. Um, that we haven't actually kind of shared. They're on the screen now. They're part of the Connected P platform. You can see here we have um, a rubric, I mean, sorry, a round robin generator. For example, you can say I've got six teams, two playing areas, five rounds, and then you can hit run and it'll produce your tournament schedule um, for you of who's playing where and, you know, what so that's pretty cool and we also have kind of like a, a an ai coach as you will where you can ask it any kind of question just open-ended um so what are some ways that i can make my pe class more fun run and it's going to give you some you know general feedback and questions um around that particular question and that you can ask any question of that particular tool um, to it and get responses and we're building more these aren't the only ones we've got um, a whole array of other tools being built at 
the present and they're all going to appear in that particular spot. So you might be asking, um, would you like to keep access to these? A few people have alluded to that already. Um, you can do it. Obviously, we've unlocked the doors for the purpose of today um, because we think they've got value and the best way to do that is to actually use them, um, experience them, get some value from them. And our normal pricing is the following. So we do a monthly plan. It's $9.99 a month. Some people use that. They get access to um, the content, the tools, and so forth. Um, as part of that, you can pay annually. Or if you're in a department, you can join and have a group of you get access to that particular um, content. However, today only, for those of you that are here in this webinar, we do have our lifetime option. Now, there are some, there's actually some people in this group who are lifetime members already. Um, if you wanted to join, never pay again, not have a monthly subscription or annual subscription, then you can just join and, and you can pay a one-time fee to have access to all of the AI tools um, that are part of Connected PE. And um, that's, yeah, never pay again. That suits some people um, in the spaces that we operate. If that's not you, then maybe you join one of the monthly plans um, and then you use them for the period of time that you have access to. So questions, let me know in the chat um, if you would like any of those answers. We've got you know a minute or so for you to, to, to address any of them. Um, it looks like people enjoyed the unit plan or the lesson plan or the PE games generator. If you wanted to get access to um, that lifetime plan, you can scan that QR code or you can join the link. Um, sorry, I have a link on, on, in the chat. And if you would prefer, if you would prefer to um, join one of the ongoing plans where you can cancel anytime, then the link for that is in the chat too. Finally, there is one last thing that you can do, and that is if you would like to get a certificate that shows your professional learning um, available to you, then there is a QR code that you can scan right there. When scanned, um, it will give you um, your certificate for 60 minutes of professional learning emailed to you. Um, that'll also, I'm going to do a copy of the replay and whatnot for those of you that haven't been able to scan that and you'll have a link for you to get your certificate in it.